In this video, I want to show you how to do custom proposal templates in Dubsado and why they are magical. So let's dive in. Hi, I'm Lainey. I'm a wedding invitation designer and I love to teach people how to run successful creative businesses. I get asked all the time what systems I use for things like invoicing, proposals, contracts, payments, etc. And the answer to all of those questions is Dubsado. I have a ton of videos on Dubsado on my platform if you want to dive deeper into some of these features. And I do have a discount code that will get you 30% off, which is designed by Lainey or the link in the description of this video. So I previously posted a video about three different proposal types that you can use in Dubsado. First, public proposals, second, custom proposals, and third, creating an invoice and then making that into a proposal. So we're gonna do custom proposals today because I think they're so powerful. So here's an example of one that I used in the past as an invitation designer. It's got, it's gonna automatically fill in some client information. We've got some instructions. Our design package for 100 pieces is already set they can't remove it and what you can see at the bottom is the total is already thirteen hundred dollars we haven't made any other selections but with these custom proposals you can allow clients to add things on to choose between packages to decide what they want which is so powerful because you don't have to do any of this you can send them a link to this they can choose everything they want and then it's going to build out the contract and the invoice it's not gonna show it here because I'm in business interview, but whatever I select on here is gonna automatically create an invoice. So let's just try it out a little bit. So we have our design fee up there, no options. Then we go into our guest addressing. So they can do calligraphy, guest addressing, envelope address printing, or waive it completely. So say they want the address printing, they're gonna select that and choose their quantity, which is 100 at 350. And you can see at the bottom, the total has now gone up $350 because they made that selection. Then over in return address, let's just say we want to waive that. Great. Um, and then the details, we could add something like envelope liners. Let's say we wanted to add those envelope liners. And then we want to, let's do a gold foil upgrade. One thing that can be confusing and you definitely want to think about, I don't use this as much anymore because it's with stationery and custom stationery, it's a little too many options. This will work really well if you're like a photographer, a website designer, a planner, or for something like a watercolor portrait where maybe they want to add on the digital or add on a pillow or add on a mug or something like that. Um, with invitations, it got kind of confusing, for instance, because foil upgrade is like a one-time cost, so they need to put one quantity, but handmade paper upgrade, they would need to put 100 if they wanted that because you need to pay that upgrade for each piece. So it's a little bit difficult um, to do things that have like different levels or it's a little confusing. You can also separate these into different sections and divide them out differently, give some more specific instructions. There's a lot of ways to do it. So just think about the simplicity of it and how complex you're asking the clients to get because I did have someone one time put 100 gold foil upgrades and while the number was great, <laughs> it was not actually correct. So then let's say that's everything that we want. Then our total is going to be $2,456.25. And we can go ahead and select that as the client. We can click through to the contract. We can sign it. And then we can click through the invoice. The invoice is going to show nothing right now. Um, so I'm not going to show that. But the client can basically see proposal, contract, and invoice and go ahead and pay that. You could send this to them and then like less than a day later, just get a payment and they're booked, they're paid, they've added on a few things, they've chosen everything they want, it's done. So you don't have to do any of that. So let's look at how we build that out. So in our templates forms, we're gonna use a proposal form and everything is in this new Dubsado form builder. Not sure if you're familiar with it, uh, but we'll just talk about like custom proposal example here. And there's so many things you can do. So up here I have some, I have a text box. I have some smart fields that will automatically pull in from their job. So whatever the job start date is, whatever their job email and first name is are gonna pull right there. And then we have some text, but how do we do these actual packages? We're going to use the package dropdown element. And what we do is we select a package first. So say we have like our basic design package, that's $2,700 and that's the one that we're going to use here. We will decide that this one's pre-selected. And for this one, we can even like get rid of the select button because they just don't need to even see that as an option because they cannot unselect it. And then you can do all the editing you want to do. So we could change where this is aligned. We can make it bold. We can change the font. You can do 
don't change it to that font. You can't read that font. <laughs> you can do so many things here. I would make this one big because this is like the big important one. And then you can use these package smart fields to decide how it's laid out. So this one just has the name. You can also add in, let's add under here, um, the names and descriptions. And we'll also make sure this is aligned in the center too. So when I click plus, you can all of a sudden see that this has all of the descriptions on it. I made this a little too big, so we don't necessarily need to have all of that. Um, I'll do the names and amounts and see what that looks like. So this is gonna show up with everything that is in the package that we created. And if you've never created packages before, um, those are here under the templates as well. And you can do a package that's got a bunch of line items or you can do a single line item like envelope liners. Um, this is just where you're gonna put in all the packages that you want them to choose from. So this is where it's pulling all of that information from. Now, if we wanted to add a package that wasn't pre-selected, what would that look like? Let's do our envelope liners that we were just showing. And we have all those same options. We'll go ahead and center this one too because that's just pretty to my brain um, and make it a little bit bigger. Now what we can do for this one is add a quantity box. And so then they have to say how many envelope liners they want. So that's like right in here, we are gonna have this quantity box and they will have to put in one to a hundred. You can put a minimum quantity of zero or a maximum quantity of a thousand. So if you need them to select like one of these options, you can put a minimum quantity of one if you need them to absolutely select something or you can have something pre-selected there. And then they can select how many of them that they want. What I would recommend highly is like putting some pictures in. You can do it a little better than I did here, um, but there's a lot of different options. Now that Dubsado's new form builder has things like containers, you could put a container and you could put this package over here in this container and then add like an image of an envelope liner right here side by side. So it looks a little bit nicer and it's very clear. This is the picture of this thing that you're selecting. Now, the only thing you need to do to make this fully work is go into your settings and you'll want to include a contract. So you'll select your contract invitation. Um, this is from Legacy Form Builder, but that's fine. And then you'll include the invoice. Oftentimes we will include a payment plan too. Um, I do the 50 only so that it's going to recommend that they pay 50% of whatever the invoice total is at the time that they create that invoice. And then we will save and close that form. And you can add it to a project very easily by going into the project, clicking forms. And here's our custom proposal example. We'll add it. And then when we open it, this is what the client is going to see. So again, there's lots of options for like customizing, making it pretty, adding your logo and things like that. Uh, but they will see this package pre-selected, no option to change it. Their total invoice is $27.95. And then if they want to add some envelope liners, let's say we're adding 100 it's going to add $150 to that invoice. And then they can click through to the contract and invoice. And since you have that payment plan on the invoice, it will go ahead and charge them the 50% retainer. So just to rewind a tad, I just wanna remind you of those two things you have to do to make this work, which is in the settings on your form, you have to include the contract and you have to click include invoice. Otherwise it will just be the proposal and they can select it and it will build the invoice on the back end for you, but it won't show that information to the client. So they won't be able to go ahead and pay it unless you want them to do that. I did mention the other types of proposals. So if you were to make this a public proposal here, then what that means is you could put this as like a contact form on your website. You could send it to someone who's never even contacted you before and they could create all of this and it'll create a new project with their information bef uh, from this proposal. So they can do everything themselves without you ever having to do anything. Personally, I prefer to have like a lead capture form, which is kind of your contact form on my website. And then I can send them this proposal um, and let them choose all the different things they want. But depending on exactly what you need for your proposal, there's a lot of options. For instance, if you were doing um, many sessions as a photographer, you could absolutely create this as a public proposal. Just put it up on your website for people to book many sessions. They could select the different options that they want and then they would do all the work and you don't even have to talk to them. You would just get the contract signed money, you can even link a scheduler to it. 
and have it fully scheduled. So there's a lot of options for what you can do. Um, I would just recommend like when you look at this one, this one did end up being really complicated for my clients because of things like them not knowing that they had to select, you know, sometimes they would accidentally select two of these or they would accidentally put that they needed, you know, one handmade paper upgrade or 100 foil upgrades. So it is a little bit complex when you get into things where they have to include quantities and the, the price breaks are by different quantities and things like that. So just think about how you can really simplify this for your clients because it's not going to be helpful to you if it's too complicated and your clients don't understand how to use it. But it would work really well for someone who has set clear packages and then a few add-ons that you might want to get your clients to add on by like showing a picture, um, including some information about them and getting them really excited to add on a mug or add on some extra prints or add on a photo album or something. So if this helped you with custom proposals in Dubsado, I think they're really powerful. And let me know what other questions you have about Dubsado. Use code DesignByLaney for 30% off and hope you'll watch some of the other Dubsado videos while you're here. Thanks, everyone.